Okay. Go take a look now at uh, June 2004, question 5 from module 4, gravitational forces question. First of all, state in words Newton's law of gravitation relating to uh, two point masses. Well, Newton's law of gravitation is very straightforward. Uh, GMM over R squared is the way that we would uh, normally remember it, but we have to state it in words here. But if you remember that equation, GMM over R squared, that's what the force is. So what we know is that uh, the force of attraction between two masses between two point masses is proportional to and it's proportional to the product of the masses so it's proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional To the square of the separation. To the square of their separation. Okay, so there's an attractive force between two point masses. It's proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of their separation. Three three points there. Force of attraction between two points proportional to the product of the masses, inversely proportional to the square of their separation. We then come on to uh, a satellite calculation. A satellite is in, in a circular orbit at a height of 32,000 kilometres above the Earth's surface. The radius of the Earth is 6400 kilometres and its mass is 6 times 10 to 24. One day is equal to 8.64 times 10 to 4 seconds. Right, calculate the period of rotation of the satellite in its orbit. Well, we're going to start here by saying that uh, the centripetal force as it goes around is provided by the gravitational force so GMM over R squared is equal to M or omega squared and we know that T equals 2 pi over omega okay so we have GMM over R squared that's the gravitational force is equal to this uh, centripetal force, so the centripetal force is provided by the gravitational force. Therefore, what we know now is that G M over R squared, because the M's are going to cancel there, equals R times 4 pi squared over T squared. Which means that what we've got here essentially is that t squared is equal to well that's going to be going to multiply the t squared up bring that so it's 4 pi squared r cubed over gm all right so now we've got to use this equation here and we've got to fill in the values so T squared is equal to 4 pi squared times r cubed. Well, it's at height of 32,000 and the radius of the earth. Okay, if we look here, it's at height of 32,000 and the radius of the earth is 6,400 kilometers. Therefore, uh, it's 4 pi squared times r cubed. So r is going to be, uh, well, it's 32,000 kilometers so it's 32,000 plus 6,400 uh, times 10 to the power of 3 and then that's all cubed divided by and then it's G so big G is 6.67 times 10 to minus 11 get that from your formula sheet times 
6 times 10 to the power of 24. I think we have 6.0 times 10 to the 24 for the mass of the Earth. Calculate that out, and that gives T equal to 7.47 times 10 to the power of 4 seconds. Remember, that's going to be in seconds. We were told earlier that one day is equal to 8.64 times 10 to the uh, power of 4. Therefore, T is equal to 7.47 times 10 to the power of 4 divided by 8.64 times 10 to the power of 4 days. So that means that T is actually equal to 0 0.87 days. So the period is not 0.87 days. Now there's a few few places there where you could be going wrong. Here you have to make sure that you add uh, the height of the satellite plus the radius of the Earth to get the total separation between the masses. Uh, and remember that was in kilometers, so times 10 to the power of 3. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11 is in your formula sheet. But that gives you a value in seconds, and we need to take the square root in order to get the period, and then we have to change that today. So there's a few things going on there where you could lose some marks. Just be careful. Calculate the acceleration uh, due to free fall at a height of 32,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. Well, again, we're going to say the acceleration due to free fall g there is the same as the field strength equal to g m over r squared. So that's equal to g, which is 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11, times 6 times 10 to the 24, divided by, and now this time we're dividing by that. Okay, so it's 30, what was it, 32,000? So 32,000 plus 6,400. Okay, times 10 to the power of 3, all squared. Put that into your calculator and calculate that out. And whenever we do that, we get that the acceleration due to free, due to free fall in that point is equal to 0 0.27. So 0 0.27 meters per second squared. Acceleration of free fall to position the satellite has a finite value, which is calculated, uh, so that an object at this point certainly has got weight. Making reference to the perception of weight by an observer, explain how astronauts inside this satellite appear to be weightless. Now remember, this is only apparent weightlessness, and that comes about because both the satellite and the astrono astronauts are in free fall. So, both the satellite And the astronauts are in free fall. And both experience the same gravitational. So that relative to each other, there's no distinguishable acceleration. Free fall. Okay, so if you consider this is the this is the satellite, okay, and it's accelerating down with 0.27 meters per second squared, okay, and this is the astronaut inside here, also 
accelerating down at 0.27 meters per second squared so that this is moving away from him at the same rate that he's moving towards that and therefore the frame of reference that he has is the satellite and because it's moving away from him at the same rate that he's moving towards it he experiences this perception of weightlessness or apparent weightlessness.